Welcome back to another episode of One on One with Mitch LaFon. I am, of course, your host, Mitch LaFon, and I am joined by Talking Metals, Mark Striegel. How you doing? I am great. Glad to be here with you, Mitch. Got You know, I got to say, I love having you on here. Um, well, thanks. Between, between you and Russ, um, I've got a combination of co-hosts that you just can't talk. Well, thanks. I, I really enjoy listening to you and Russ on the podcast. I know he's been not on quite as much due to the accident, which great interview with him, by the way, talking about yeah. everything that went down and very interesting and at times difficult to, to listen to. I mean, I, I can't imagine what was going no. through his head. I mean, he talks about it on, on that episode. If you guys haven't heard it, you should go check it out. Yep. Uh, you know, it, there was a moment where he was questioning whether he was actually going to survive, you know, yeah. and that's, that's pretty, pretty heavy stuff. And you did a great job talking to him about a difficult situation. Yeah. And, and, you know, kudos to him for actually coming on and reliving, uh, that moment, uh, you know, because it's still very fresh. It's, it, it, it's only like not even a month ago now and exceptionally traumatic. And here he is talking about uh, how he almost passed away and talking about how uh, his wife felt and, and, and some of the guilt and some of this. So, so, so kudos for him for laying it on the line and letting the fans in on the whole thing. Now, of course, um, Coming up, uh, I've got an interview with Black Star Riders that, that, that Russ is going to help me with. And cool. I, th- I think somewhere in there, you, me, and Russ need to get on and do one of these co-hostings together. That would be great. I that think, would be great. I, I yes. think that would be great. And then what we need to do is go over to the Talking Metal podcast. And you interview Russ. Well, I had that on my calendar because he had told me, oh, contact him at the beginning of the month, meaning, meaning May June. Or whatever it was. Yeah. yeah, I think it was June yeah. is when he met. And uh, I didn't do that because of the accident. I kind of just wanted to give him a little time. But definitely when he's feeling up to it, and it sounds like maybe he's back up and feeling up to it, being that he's podcasting with you again, yeah. uh, I should give him an a ring or an email and book an interview with him because he's never been on Talking Metal and it's about time we get him on. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, just before we get started with today's uh, guest, who is Jordan Rudess of, of Dream Theater, the great Dream Theater, uh, let's quickly talk about the Heavy Montreal Festival coming up August 9th and 10th, Parc Jean Drapeau in beautiful downtown uh, Montreal, uh, again featuring Metallica, Slayer, and just so many other bands. You've got to go. August 19th, uh, Ivenko, the promoter, is bringing Skid Row to Montreal at the Corona Theater. If, of course, you're listening to this and you don't live in Montreal, uh, Skid Row is going to be on tour in North America all summer long. Uh, Go out to one of their local shows and support them. Great band. Deserve your support. Uh, There you go. Definitely. definitely. Uh, how's, how's, How's that for a little commercial? Absolutely. And one more while we're at it. Guys, Mitch has a PayPal account. He does a lot of great interviews for you here on One on One with Mitch LaFon. Show him a little support. Send him a donation. Nothing is too small. Nothing is too large. Again, PayPal is the place to go. And his account is MitchMinute at AOL.com. Thank you for mentioning that, Mark. Let's get right into our guest, the great Jordan Rudis of Dream Theater. Are you a big fan? You know, the thing I like most about Dream Theater is how great they all are at their instruments. I mean, they are so technically proficient, and we've spoken about this before. I actually am one of the people that thought, well, when Portnoy leaves, they're just going to go down and, you know, go downhill, and it's, it's been just the opposite. They've continued to grow and deliver great music to us, so hats off to them, and just an amazing bunch of musicians. And it sounds like Jordan has an amazing app for musicians, right? Yeah. You know, with his company, he, he's developed a bunch of different apps over the last couple of years. And the new one was released on, uh, at the beginning of this month in June called Harmony Wiz. It's been, it's been considered a minor musical miracle. And of course, Jordan's going to describe the functionality and, and all the bells and whistles that go with it. Um, but, you know, after listening to Jordan, 
I, I went to the app store and I checked it out and I showed it to my daughter and I'm, I'm going to be buying it because it really looks cool. If you're a complete novice and have no understanding of music, he's got this thing called a paint feature. And I'm not going to describe it. I'm going to let Jordan describe it because he does in the interview. Um, but it, it just makes it so simple. Um, you know what? Why don't we just let Jordan uh, get into this for the next uh, 20 or so minutes? Listen to Jordan talk about the Harmony Wiz app. And of course, we do talk about at the end of the interview, the new Dream Theater album. Have a listen. And we're speaking with uh, Jordan Rudess of Dream Theater. How are you doing today, Jordan? I'm doing very well. So, you know, it, it's not often that you get a member of a band on one of these interviews and have uh, nothing to do to, about the band. We're going to talk about software today and, and your products. Excellent. I love that. Right. So before we get into to the, the new app that you have, Harmony Wiz, let's talk a little bit about Wisdom Music. It's a company that you set up in 2010. What was the idea behind setting up a sort of, I guess, a software development company, for the lack of a yeah. better word? Yeah. Um, well, I've been involved in the technology world uh, for a long time, um, having a real background with a lot of the companies that make musical instruments. Okay. Um, matter of fact, when I left Juilliard and was, you know, I was going to be a classical pianist, the first thing I did basically was I got a job with Korg as a product specialist, and I got really into working with the technology and the instruments and being part of that. Um, not only just making sounds and demo pieces, but also having to do with how these instruments were designed. And, you know, at first just giving su suggestions and then getting more kind of into that, into that role. So during the years as my career developed, that passion just became something that was a part of my life. I never really wanted to let go of that. I wanted to, you know, maintain my connection with the industry. I would go to all the NAM shows and, you know, visit these companies and have meetings. And so that was really a part of it. And then when the, um, when the whole multi-touch thing happened, right. and especially when the iPhone happened and you have the ability to put that kind of multi-touch in your pocket, I started to become very inspired and, the, and it just really sparked my creativity. And I literally, I remember sitting around playing with an extremely preliminary type piano keyboard app that somebody had made, just kind of almost like a proof of concept app that you could play the Right. piano on, on an iPhone, and I would sit there, and I was just really like daydreaming, basically, because I had all these ideas about what you could do with this type of multi-touch um, device and music and expression. So it was around the time that the app store was just kind of emerging, and people were just creative people were starting to put their ideas up there in the form of these little apps and no big companies that were part of it at all. You didn't have like the Korg and the native instruments and, you know, anybody making like apps at that point. But, um, but my eyes were totally on that. So I wanted, I, I wanted to see what was possible in that world. So I had um, found a little app that was kind of in the field that I was interested in. It had used lines and controlling pitch. And I reached out to the developer who made that. Uh, his name is Kevin Chartier. And we started a relationship right away. He wanted to work with me. I wanted to work with him. And we started right into my first uh, big project um, in iOS, which was called MorphWiz. Right. MorphWiz, the whole concept of it, was to kind of merge together the world of audio and visual and to make it so it was really synergistic in one thing. So as you change the sound, as you, you would also see something change in the visual. So we had a lot of success with that in all ways. I think, you know, just creatively, conceptually, it was a, it's a really interesting concept, very important to me. And then the way that we implemented it was, uh, you know, was fun and it was also very successful. Successful, and to this day, MorphWiz is one of my biggest selling apps because it was, I think, a really working concept. So, um, you know, I got a good start in that world, and I was inspired by it. And to this day, I'm still inspired by it. And I'm trying, you know, I try different things. I get an idea. I meet different developers um, who have different skills, and I'm able to just, you know, put forth a lot of these ideas. It's been a great kind of working platform for me because, you know, you can do so much on your own. You don't need an entire office full of people. You don't need a big company. 
um, you know, you need a really qualified developer and, you know, maybe a really great artist and a UI guy if you choose to go that route, depending on, you know, who you're working with. So that, that's kind of like, you know, where, where this is all coming from and the reason I started this company. So is, is are sort of musical apps the only thing that you're interested in? Or do you think at some point you might get into making games or combining, you know, games with music scores? Or is, are you really going to stick to just sort of music apps? Um, you know, one of the apps we came out with after MorphWiz was called SketchWiz. SketchWiz right. is still on the store. And that's not a music app at all. And what's funny is because we were working in the world of visuals, we were inspired with some of the experiments that we had done with MorphWiz and decided to take some of that and just make a simple kind of photo app. Um, so there's, you know, there's a great tie in there. So I wouldn't say that I'm, you know, stuck on music apps. Um, I certainly am interested in graphics and visuals. And so it's, you know, I don't have any plans right this moment, but it's totally possible that we'll, uh, you know, spread out a little bit more in that area as well. So let's talk about Harmony Wiz, the new app. Um, you've described it in a in an online video as being a minor musical miracle. Uh, well, then, how so? How is it a minor musical miracle? Um, <clears throat> well, it kind of is in the sense that it is able to produce really amazing results from just you know a very simple kind of input, whether it's drawing uh, a beautiful line on the painting area or just using your keyboard. What's, what's really cool about it to me is that, you know, I've worked with technology for a long time and synthesizers, and personally, I could expect something, like let's say I put in a single musical line. I might expect something that could harmonize each note of the musical line. But Harmony Wiz goes so much deeper than that. Harmony Wiz is actually to take your input musical line, again, whether by painting or by uh, inputting it with the keyboard, and actually flesh it out as a multi-part arrangement. So it's not like there's a chord on every single melodic note. Harmony Wiz decides on which notes of your melody to add the chords, and then it has like counterpoint. Right. within the different lines. So maybe the top line is playing, you know, a mixture of quarter notes and eighth notes and the and the uh, line underneath it, let's call it soprano and alto. So the alto would be playing something of just like half notes and the bass may be playing something totally different. But the harmonic language and the style really can work very well. So it takes and I always thought that this was possible. And I'm not you know, I'm not ever saying that a computer is I don't want people to be threatened by this. I'm not saying a computer can replace, you know, a, mu a you know, a musician. You know, although certainly in John Petrucci's quote about it, he was kidding around and said, if Jordan keeps on making technology like this, he'll be replaced. Well, you know, the beauty of it for me as a musician is one that makes me to use harmony with myself. It makes me really, really smile okay. <clears throat> because one of the things I did to create harmony with is I took a melody, a simple melody, and I recorded it in about. 30 different ways. I just took the same melody and played all these different harmonies and sent it to my developer. And then we talked about it and he basically coded it. So it would use some of the possibilities. So it would kind of be like in the mind of Jordan Rudis, um, you know, for when it uh, uh, kind of decides on what uh, chords to play. So I, I think it's, it's more to be thought of. There's a couple, there's a couple of ways to think of this. One is it's something that purely can make, to bring the joy of music to somebody. Like you paint, if you don't know anything about music, you paint an a, a attractive line on your screen, the notes fly up to the staff, and next thing you know, you've got something that really sounds really good. If you're a musician like myself or whatever level, you can put in a line and get some really, really interesting ideas. You might say, you know what? I'm just curious what Harmony Wiz would do if I put in these few notes like, repetitively. What is it going to do? Maybe, it'll, maybe it will kind of like offer some options that I wouldn't have thought of before. You know, and that's totally possible. Harmony Wiz might come up with something that you just like didn't think of, right. and you go, "Wow, that's cool!" And so you could use that either by massaging Harmony Wiz and using the editing tools to create something, or just use it in your own, you know, creation and say, "I really love when it went to the, you know, the five chord and then the deceptive cadence. That was really cool. I'm going to use that." So the other way that Harmony Wiz can be really cool is that after Harmony Wiz creates. Um, you know, this, this multi-part arrangement, it offers what we call a figured bass, which is the, the theoretical way of showing 
the different chords in a key. So you might, it might say, okay, this is a one chord, this is a five chord, this is the three chord and second inversion. So there's a lot of information there. And for a music student, it's really, really cool because all of a sudden they're getting to really see what's happening with, you know, the theory behind these moving chords in the classical style. Because really in the what we call the Baroque style, it's following some very um, specific rules of harmony. It really is. Is the harmony with apps something that you might actually consider using in making new music with Dream Theater? Could, could you come up with a whole piece on this or is it just sort of more of a play kind of app? Um, I would use it personally as inspiration. Okay. I would, I would take a melody that I'm writing and put it in harmony with and see what it does. Okay. And then and then get inspiration from it, um, but you know on the other hand somebody could take and first of all you know Dream Theater is a, is a um, a funny example in a way because it more harmony with could be more thought of if you were going to do like a string quartet or something like that or some kind of a quintet right. and you wanted to uh, you know flesh out something for that ensemble this could totally do that because you. Have, of these, these four or five individual lines, which are just beautifully written out, and you can send it, after Harmony Wiz does its thing, you can send it to, to a notation program, and then you're like all set to go. So in that sense, if I was writing something like that, that would be actually pretty cool. As a matter of fact, that's a good idea. I should think about just giving like a string quartet or a woodwind quintet a Harmony Wiz piece to play. It would be a funny kind of, you know, interesting example. But... Um, yeah, so this, you know, there's lots of possibilities with, with the way that one could use it. Plus, it sounds really nice. You know, we we have uh, I worked with the um, orchestra that I was using for my latest orchestral album, Explorations, uh, Sinfonietta Canzonis, and I actually had some of their musicians give me some kind of custom sounds, like the violin and trumpet and French horn and all these things. So the sounds are really nice. Really uh, and then I have a relationship. With the uh, with the guy who made this wonderful app called Thumb Jam, uh, and he makes Drum Jam too, and and uh, and he actually contributed some sounds that we're using for uh, our in-app purchases. So there's a whole nice assortment of sounds that you can that you can get going uh, within the app as well to make whatever you're doing sound really nice. Yeah, and what I like uh, from looking at it was that sort of paint feature where you could sort of use your finger to make a line, and then music comes out. I, I could see that being used. Uh, in a therapeutic setting, especially with with younger kids and with all kinds of you know, um, that that's a great thing. H have you thought of any kind of therapeutic uses for it? Um, you know, I'm very kind of passionate about the fact that Harmony Wiz allows people who are novices, you know, never played music before, to make music in this really kind of creative, attractive way. And the painting mode is something that I've thought about a lot. For First of all, with the painting mode, uh, what it looks at, it looks at the speed of your draw. Right. And if you draw very fast, it'll play faster notes. If you draw slow, it's going to play slower notes. And of course, harmony with is just determining, you know, you can't put more notes in a bar than the time signature will allow. So if it's like a measure of 4-4, four, four, then it's got to figure out no matter what you draw, how to do that. So there's little, you know, calculations and, and interesting things going on behind the scenes. But what I have thought about is maybe in the future taking this whole drawing concept and, and scaling back and, and creating a, a kind of a, a brother or sister app to Harmony Wiz that would focus on that and, and really make it just really super easy, um, you know, to, to work with. And that could be used in a therapeutic type of sense. I think it's a wonderful idea. It really is. Now, now the one thing, or maybe the tougher question here is, you know, you go to the iTunes store and there are hundreds of thousands of apps, maybe even millions of apps. Right. Why, why should somebody get Harmony Wiz? What, what makes it unique and different that that's the app they got to go check out? And I think they should, by the way. Yes, thank you. Um, yes, I know exactly what you're saying in the sense that, you know, I look on the app store and you're right. There, there are like hundreds of apps that come out every day and most mm -hmm. of them we don't even know about. We don't see, we don't, you know, and therefore we, they don't enter our sphere at all. Mm -hmm. And I'm very lucky that, you know, you know, through the years, through all my work, um, you know, I, I'm able to have a presence in the app store. I'm able to work with Apple on the marketing of these apps. Um, you know, <clears throat> so there's a lot of differences here. One is that I've been in this business now for a long time. I understand it. I have a feeling for what people are going to like. I'm so, I'm so, you know, totally devoted and passionate. I get excited about it. So, there's that element too, where you know I'm not going to put out something that I'm not really that I don't think is really cool. Right. Um, 
so, you know, that part of it makes it, you know, hopefully, I, I think a little different or a lot different than a lot of the things that do come out that get unnoticed. Um, so, you know, it, it's, it's kind of like, you know, it, Harmony Wiz is different but just because of the experience of the people that created it that went into it. It's also different because of the background of my company and the developers and the relationship I have within that, you know, market with, with Apple, basically. You, you know, I got to say, that, that, that's probably one of the best answers I've ever heard. Uh, the experience of the people putting, it, you know, their work and their heart, their sweat and tears into an app or, or into music really does make a difference. And the fact that you understand music and you've toured it and you, you've done it on a professional level for so long, it, it does make the app more than just, hey, here's some amateur who punched out something. And I think that's right. important to remember. It really is. I think it's totally important to remember. I mean, I'm not going to let anything out my door that, first of all, doesn't have a decent sound and doesn't you know, flow in a creative way. And, and I've played with so many synthesizers over the years, so many different kinds of controllers and keyboards and met so many people that I like to think that there's going to be a lot of uh, care. You know, we spent a long time on Harmony Wiz. It's been, you know, over a year just kind of like going back and forth. And I brought, ended up bringing people into the team that were graphic people and user experience people to make sure that it was, you know, a positive experience. And quite honestly, you know, Harmony Wiz is a deep app. Yeah. There's a lot of things about it. Like you can get into the expert mode and you can like get yourself even in a jam. You know, there's so many different levels to it. If you're in the painting mode, the easy mode, you just draw and you hit the button and it's like right there every time. It'll, it'll make an arrangement before you can blink your eyes. If you go deeper than that, you know, this thing has got some serious rules and kind of brains behind the scenes. And that, you know, that's, a, it, 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 the experience can be very different. It can start going slower. You know, it's going to say, okay, well, let's see. We're in Baroque now, and you're asking me to play like you know something that's completely atonal. So harmony was my my blink itself, but um, <laughs> but that's the nature of what it is. Yeah, and and I also like the fact that it, you're not just one of these app developers in for a quick buck. I mean, you you do have sort of a brand, you know, to defend at the same time. It can't just be junk. And if you watch the YouTube video that you host explaining how it works, it's just amazing what it can do it's it's so much more than just click a button and off you go i mean it's it's really something yeah. yeah and you're right i'm definitely not in it for a quick buck i mean the reality is i have you know a day job right. i have my group dream theater I'm, i don't you know my kids are still eating fine they will they'll eat even if i don't have an app company right. i do this because i love it uh i get to work with interesting people and i get i have my my hands on something that I think is very uh, not only inspiring, but I think it's really important for the future of music technology. I think the whole multi-touch thing. I think what these what these screens have offered. I think what the you know the uh, iOS world has offered to, to the music industry and to people in general is amazing. I think the fact that people can walk around with like an iPhone in their pocket and have access to technology that is just so incredible and in a lot of ways, in, so, and in, in many cases, better than a lot of the things that they'll find on their really expensive hardware keyboards. Yeah. You know, cool. you walk around, you pick like Geosynthesizer, one of my other apps, and you, you, you see what that does with the way that it intelligently handles pitch and you can play these incredible leads and stuff on it. You can do things I can't do with any of the big keyboards I have, you know, and I have that you know in my pocket <laughs> it's like crazy I know. so you know there's got to be i think part of what i'm working on is finding the kind of balance and working with some of the companies i'm saying you know what on one hand we have this incredible thing you can have in your pocket on the other hand you've got this tremendous you know expensive you know instrument how can we make sure that it's it's as up to date as current as inspiring as, as what people are walking like everyday people are walking around with you know talking on the phone with you know, it's amazing to think, because we're both roughly around the same age, if we had this technology, you know, back in 1982 when we were younger, what we could have done. I mean, it's, it's, it's just incredible what you can do now with something in your back pocket. Absolutely. It, it blows my mind every day. <laughs> and I still you know, I just keep my eyes in the store and, and all these different things that come out, not only in, in the Apple world, but, you know, in the Android world and Windows and, <clears throat> and I did some stuff with BlackBerry, you know, just because things are changing every day. 
Yeah, and absolutely. There's someone who's into it, <clears throat> somebody who's into, uh, you know, all these possibilities and, you know, uh, passionate about these little gadgets that are changing the world. I just think that it's, it's great. It's fun. It's exciting. It really is. And, and it's good to see an artist actually involved rather than waiting for the technology to get to you. You're, you're out there on the forefront creating the technology. Before we wrap up, I think we, we should ask one obligatory dream theater question. And it's just sort of what's happening with the band? What's, what's sort of next? The last album came out last year. Uh, what's, what's up for the band? Well, we're getting ready to go continue our world tour. Um, we actually had a nice two month break nice in many ways to get a chance to do everything else we needed to do. Like in my case, release harmony with <laughs> took a lot of energy. Um, so we had a little break, but we really are in our touring cycle. So we have a lot more touring to go. Um, we're going to be, uh, doing a month in Europe and then, uh, it looks like we're going to be probably heading down to South America and, you know, we, we're going to Asia. The loud park concert has been announced. It's a big festival yeah. over in Asia and, 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 you know, we'll probably fill in some shows there. And, you know, there's more ground to cover for sure. So um, <clears throat> that's, what, that's what the immediate plan is. The band's in a great place. Uh, I just feel so grateful and thankful for it because Dream Theater has kind of risen above, uh, you know, what's going on in the music business, really, which upsets me and kind of is very scary. Um, but we have, have our own world. You know, we worked for so many years. Uh, touring and recording that I feel like we kind of uh, developed this nice solid structure and foundation to what we do. And, uh, uh, you know, at this point, even though the business is tough, I feel like we're, we have a, you know, a, we're in a good place. Yeah. So we're, we're definitely going to continue touring and then we're going to stop and take, maybe take a little break and we'll, we'll start working on another album and just continue, uh, kind of continue as, as usual. Yeah, I just got to say, I'm amazed with the Dream Theater story because, you know, I've been following rock bands for, for many, many years. And I look at some of the bands that started in arenas in the 80s and then in the 90s, they were down to theaters. And then by the 2000s, they were into clubs and, and now they're playing rib fests. And, and you yeah. guys have gone the other direction. When I first saw you, you were in, in, in smaller venues. And, and now, you know, the last time you were in Montreal, it was the Bell Center. And you're doing the opposite of bands that have had these long careers. You keep getting bigger and bigger, and you know, kudos to the band. It's 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 a very difficult marketplace, and the fact that you can do that is astonishing. It really is. Thank you so much. You know, part of it is the band, the band members and what we do. A lot of it has to do with our team around us. Mm -hmm. I'm not I'm not saying that you know, for, for, for like to, to make them feel good, but I mean, you know, as the tour manager and the manager and the people that go on the crew that we take on tour, you. You know, the, uh, being a band like Dream Theater is so complex. There's so many elements to it to keep us alive and to keep us out there on the road and making money and able to do what we do that it just goes so far beyond the music. So, I'm, you know, I really feel that it's important for people to understand that, that that's just the truth. Yeah. The Dream Theater organization is a very strong, very friendly, very secure, cool place to be. And that's one of the reasons we're, that, you know, we're able to think creative and to work and to go in the studio and continue doing what we do. Um, you know, that's a big, big part of it. And, you know, as far as, as far as like reaching the next level, I mean, one thing I've noticed since I joined Dream Theater almost 16 years ago is that we were always able to kind of conceptualize or imagine where we wanted to be, like, in the future. Or, like, what do we want, what kind of impact do we want this album to have, right. this next one? And we would literally almost, like, write it down on paper and through the, you know, the musical strength and the personal strength of the members, we've been able to successfully do that each and every time. And I think it's amazing because I know that, you know, people say, oh, a band is stronger than all the individual parts. And it, in so many ways it is because if you put like Petrucci and myself and all the other guys together, there's a lot of force there in all different ways. And that's really what makes it work yeah. oh, to absolutely. be able to work together and to take advantage of those talents, you know, like. I just, I'm, I'm so grateful for the for the opportunity to be in this band and have this much talent around me and this much support. It's really, really a cool story. It really is, and uh, I'll finish this by saying uh, I've also noticed an incredible devotion from the Dream Theater fan base. I, I mean, you see that with you know Kiss fans, and you see that with Metallica fans, but a lot of other fans have these fair weather. You know, the other bands have fair weather fans, and Dream Theater fans just seem 
uh, you know, uh, viciously uh, loyal, not maybe not vicious, uh, voraciously loyal. Just, yes. And Absolutely. It's a great thing. It's a great thing. It is good. Thanks so much for chatting. Thank you, Jordan. It. I Have a good cool. one. All right, Mitch. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. What you just heard was Mitch's interview with Jordan Rudess from Dream Theater. Yeah, great. Great guy. Cool. Well, we've had two Dream Theater guys on one-on-one in probably, what, the last 10 episodes or so. Yeah, you know, I interviewed uh, the drummer Mike back in March, and uh, I actually had uh, met Jordan at that same time because we were at a hotel, in uh, the Delta Hotel in, in Montreal, and uh, we were all sort of milling around the uh, restaurant area because that's where they were doing interviews. And so I had a chance to, to, to meet Jordan as well. And here we are a couple of months later doing another one. Um, you Definitely. Know, a great bunch of guys. And as I said in the Mike interview, as I said with Jordan, here's a band that, you know, 15 years ago were playing smaller clubs and theaters and they've gone up now into arenas and, and even more, depending on what territories they're in. Whereas a lot of their contemporaries 15 years ago were playing in theater or playing in arenas and now are working their way back down to bars. So it's just amazing how they've managed to survive and grow and prosper and, and really become sort of a better band. Honestly. Yeah, and, and all of it, you know, without any real support from radio or vh1 no and even some websites don't really give them a lot of support so it's it truly is uh the fans that just spread the word about this band and help them grow and they have some great hardcore fans devoted hardcore fans you know most dream theater fans aren't casual dream theater fans they're hardcore fans that know all the records and yeah you know, and just real... And check out interviews passion. like we did today. Yes, definitely. definitely. No, and, and I think that's one thing that we need to, to keep reminding folks is, uh, you know, it's important to be a fan of a band and be a loyal fan because a lot of the bands that have survived and prospered started out with no radio play, n- no love from promoters, no love from newspapers. And I'm talking about Metallica. I'm talking about Megadeth. I'm talking about Kiss. Uh, you know, all these bands got ignored by mainstream media, and because fans stuck with them, they became popular. And I think that's sort of the same story with Dream Theater. You're not going to hear uh, Harmony Wiz being talked about on, you know, uh, CNN or whatever. Yeah. Or, or you're not going to hear the new Dream Theater album on the top 40 of your local radio station. So it's important for fans to support them. And their fans are great, you know, great, Definitely. great fans. Uh, Definitely. Anyway, I hope the fans who are great and who did tune in enjoyed what we did. And if, of course, you did, please spread the word. Share it with other Dream Theater fans. Let them know that One on One is here doing these kind of interviews. And, of course, head over to Talking Metal Digital and check out the other shows, including Mark's. Yeah, Talking Metal. Talking Metal Digital dot com or just simply Talking Metal dot com. Uh, you know, we have Victor Ruiz's show, Mars Attacks. We have a show called Talking Rock. We have Talking Metal. And, of course, one-on-one with Mitch LaFon. Thank you. There you go. Thank you, folks. Oh, did we mention the Heavy Montreal a second time? I don't think we did. We certainly should. Uh, this episode, like all episodes, brought to you by the Heavy Montreal Festival taking place August 9th and 10th at Parc Jean Drapeau. Beautiful downtown Montreal featuring Offspring, Lamb of God, Bad Religion, Slayer, and I'll say it every time, my favorite, Metallica. That is going to be the absolute highlight of my summer is to see Metallica live. Um, you know, And of course, August 19th, Corona Theater in Montreal again. Skid Row brought to you by the same promoter, Evenco. If you're not in Montreal and you cannot get out to the Skid Row show here, find them locally somewhere in the States this summer, go out, support them. Great guys, great band, great music, and great entertainment. Thank you, folks. Take care, guys.